So what defines a category? Well, if I asked you, you might think, as a first guess, that it's easy to come up with a rule that defines whether something is a member of a category or not. And that's exactly what cognitive psychologists thought originally. So in the classic or the original view of categorization, what defined a category was based on a clear definition. And that definition included things that um, were necessary. So you had to have a particular thing to be a member of that category. And there were also things that, you know, combined would be sufficient to put you in that category. So it might be that every item in a category had all of a particular set of characteristics. This will make sense in a second. So that actually definitional approach does work for some things. So geometric shapes, it works perfectly for. There's a very clear definition of what a circle is. No ambiguity there. You either fall in the category of a circle or you don't. Squares, very simple, right? A square has to have 90 degree corners. It needs to have four of them and those corners need to be connected by straight lines. Easy. But what if I asked you to define a bachelor? Well, that would be easy, right? A bachelor, by definition, is an unmarried man. But here's an unmarried man. The Catholics out there would know that the Pope is not somebody you think of when you think of the category of bachelor. But he is and he's not, and ugh, categories are hard. Let's take the category of pet food. You'd think, well, easy. Cats like meat, so meat out of a can or dried kibble, sure. But some cats like to eat bananas, some like popcorn. That's cat food. So what do you do with your definition of cat food? Is it anything a cat will eat? If somebody asks me to go to the grocery store and get cat food and I come back with bananas, is that okay? Probably not. Uh, how about the category of cat? That's easy, right? Cat's a furry thing and four legs and tail and pointy ears. But some cats don't have tails, some cats don't have fur, some cats like to hunt after mice and things, some don't. Coming up with definitions turns out to be really hard. So imagine that I asked you to define a bear, right? Imagine uh, your, your Twitter feed explodes that there's a bear sighted in your neighborhood. Okay, what's a bear? Here's two drawings. You tell me which one's the bear. Not obvious, right? Um, how do you define a cat and not a dog? Well, you could say, well, dogs are bigger than cats, and, well, it's hard. Uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? What defines a sandwich? Like bread and some meat between it. So by that definition, a hot dog is a sandwich. Is a taco a sandwich? Well, okay. So is a hot dog a taco? Is a taco a hot dog? Hmm. According to the original approach, right, the definitional approach, whether something belonged in a category depended on whether that thing, that item, was consistent with your definition of that category. But this just doesn't work. Take the example of chair. You think chair would be an easy category, but we have beanbag chairs, and you could use a rock as a chair, or a log as a chair, or a flipped over box as a chair. What defines a chair? Even better, what defines a friend? That's tricky. That's what really gets tricky. So the traditional view of categorization says that people have uh, categories that are very clear and unambiguous, and that the boundaries of that category are nice and clear and sharp, and no one disagrees about them. So the boundary between a cat and a dog, for example, would be very clear. In reality, it's very difficult to come up with any definition that defines a category perfectly, except if you are talking about human-made constructs like circles and squares. But even, you know, defining things, is a bed a chair? I don't know, is this thing a cat or a dog? We'll come back and we'll talk about modern theories of categorization.